It is no secret that the Raiden Shogun banner is correct. All of my friends wanted a piece of this banner, and for good reason. I mean, just look at the 5 star. A very hyped up and very beautiful female Archon, mm -hmm, with an interesting personality, awesome gameplay, and a ton of memes. Okay, and that's just the 5 star. Now let's look at the 4 stars. Two hilariously powerful 4 star units, plus one extra that seems to be very promising. This is a good banner. So when my AR56 friend rolled on it and lost his 50-50 to Chi Chi, knowing that he'd see nothing but Raiden profile pictures everywhere, I couldn't help but feel bad. But then... <laughs> this freak changed my mind. I went from pitying him to fearing his rising pity count, because in just three days, he managed to get 81 new rolls and clutched himself a Raiden Shogun completely free to play. So, for all of you interested little creatures out there, I interviewed him on how it happened and got a general gist now of the process. Do be warned before I begin though, the investment Tuna poured in over these three days is enough to burn most people out. So while I hope this video is able to provide proper guidance, please don't burn yourselves out just for the sake of wishing sooner. With that out of the way though, I think it's time. It is time to reveal to you the hidden ancient powers of exploration. <laughs> now, I know that might not sound helpful, but there's more to it, and I'll explain as much as I can. First, why explore? If you didn't already know, proportionately, exploration rewards you with the most primo gems out of any other method in the entire game. Take note that exploration collectively includes chests, sealy, puzzles, oculi, sigils, waypoints, exploration domains, shrines of depths, time challenges, some achievements, and technically world quests too. Each of these individually won't reward you with much primos, but the proximity and quantity of treasure in the world makes exploring better than all of the other methods I'll mention later. Though, of course, in order to speedrun primo gems, you still need to know the where, what, and how of exploration. For Tuna, where was pretty straightforward. Version 2.1 released the new areas Watatsumi and Seirai, which is where most, if not all, of his exploring took place. New areas are always great because waypoints give you additional primo gems when activated for the first time. It's also going to be much easier to find new treasure. With that said though, it's not a requirement to pillage those two islands specifically. I would recommend opening your map, zooming all the way out, and scanning for areas that are less than 80% explored. Depending on how much you've already done, or how difficult certain areas are for you, your order of priority may vary. As a general rule of thumb, I would personally recommend exploring Dragonspine first, then Inazuma, then Lia, then Mondstadt last. And when picking a sub-area to start with, I usually just rely on my memory. For instance, if I can't confidently recall any nearby chests for a given waypoint, chances are I haven't explored that area enough. Moving on, we have what to look out for. Once you've picked out an area or even a sub-area, I suggest starting with a useful trick that I learned from Tuna called looking around. Any shiny, interactable objects, suspicious looking locations, colorful glowing in the distance, whatever it is, inspect it. Remember that not everything is immediately visible to you, so it's important to be as thorough and suspicious of everything as possible. Some of Genshin's chests can be found hidden underground, beneath rocks, or behind some very conveniently placed carrots, so honestly, nothing is off the table here. Just search around as much as you can, and don't forget to check your minimap constantly in case a world quest or oculus icon appears. Anyways, now you know where to go and what to find. So, all that's left is obtaining everything as efficiently as possible. For that, you need a good team. For example, Tuna's go-to exploration team consists of Ayaka, Singcho, Bennett, and Kazuha. I mean, need I really say more? Now, even if you don't have this exact set of characters, I would still highly recommend setting up an exploration team anyway. Your goal in making this team is to balance mobility and combat. That said, if you have trouble thinking of a good setup, you can always just cook food so you don't have to worry about mobility anymore. From here, we need to put your team to good use. Once you've picked out a starting location, think of that place as a chunk of the map. Whether it's a sub-area, teleport waypoint, or unmarked location, treat it like a piece of the whole map, then explore that whole area as thoroughly as you can before moving on. This is Tuna's preferred method of exploration, but there are always other ways to approach it. For example, wandering around dev-intended paths and treasure hunting along the way works just as fine. 
It all depends on your team and how you think so you can maximize the efficiency of traveling. And now back to actual specific tips. If you stumble across a world quest, you can talk to the NPCs to activate them, but save the actual questing for after you're done exploring so you don't lose track of where you are. Most of the major world quests are required for better exploration though, so keep that in mind as well. If ever you get stuck on a puzzle or don't know how to obtain an oculi, I would suggest marking it on your map with a pin and labeling it, that way you can always just come back another time. On a similar note, if enemies are giving you a rough time, you can consider lowering your world level if you get really desperate. As far as I'm aware, world level does not affect the Primo Gem reward from chests, just the drop quality. So while I highly advise against doing this, it will at least make treasure hunting slightly more efficient. Finally, if you feel like you've fully explored an area but are still a bit unsure, you can always just double check with an interactive map online. Heck, you can even have your entire exploration be guided by that thing as long as you keep note of where you've been and where you're going. By exploring systematically this way, you can slowly but surely clear out an entire map area with at least 90% exploration by the time you're done. Just so you get an idea, Tuna had basically 100% cleared both Watatsumi and Seirai by the time he finished his exploration grind, which also granted him an additional 50 or so achievements. Speaking of which, when you're finished, don't forget to turn in any sigils and oculi you have, and return to any world quests that you haven't finished as well. Huh, that was a lot, but hopefully it helped. To be honest, exploration is a very straightforward thing. It's not even that demanding of skill, just your time and attention. The reason Tuna was able to explore so quickly, apart from his intense focus, was because he got used to exploring the previous regions before now. So if you really want to get good at exploring and speedrun like Tuna did, your best bet is to keep going and spot the recurring patterns so you get faster and better at it. With all of that out of the way though, here's all the other tricks Tuna used to get more fates and primos quickly. First, foremost, and most obvious, events, commissions, and spiral abyss. Don't forget to do them. They are the most reliable ways to obtain extra wishes no matter your adventure rank. Well, that and Paimon's Bargains. Every month, the Paimon's Bargain shop resets, so as long as you have enough Masterless Stardust, you'll be able to purchase up to 5 additional intertwined fates per month. Stardust and Star Glitter are obtainable after rolling on any banner, which effectively means you can roll on the perm banner with fates, and then convert any Stardust you get into intertwined fates. For this reason, Tuna actually went ahead and ascended a few low-level characters of his so that he could get a quaint fates, roll the perm banner, and convert the leftover Stardust into intertwined fates. Just so you know though, Tuna was pretty desperate, so in addition to the Star Dust shop, he made sure to sacrifice all of his Star Glitter for intertwined fates as well. Apart from the Stardust monthly reset, another saving grace is mail. Mehoyo will sometimes randomly send messages in the mail that contain Primo Gems, so make sure to constantly check it whenever you see a ping, especially after a big Genshin update release. The final bonus thing Tuna noted was that he was also maintaining his Serenity Pot because if you didn't know, completing furnishing sets for certain characters can actually reward you with Primo Gems as well. But anyways, that's more or less all the special advice Tuna gave me. There are obviously a lot of other ways to obtain Primo Gems and Fates, but I don't plan on dedicating the rest of this video to explaining them all. So, I'll be listing everything instead. In no particular order, we've got Daily Commissions, Daily Check-Ins, Battle Pass, Events, Web Events, Redeem Codes, Mail, Paimon's Bargains, Spiral Abyss, Adventurer's Handbook, Adventure Rank, Achievements, Tutorials, Quests, including Story, World, and Hangout Events, Unlocking Waypoints, Completing Domains, Upgrading Archon Statues, The Sacred Sakura, and The Frostbearing Tree, Ascending Characters, Gift Sets and Rank Increases within the Serenity Pot, and finally, Chests, which come in various shapes and sizes including Free Chests, Lock Chests, Shrines of Depths, Sealy Chests, Puzzle Chests, Pressure Plate Puzzles, Those Weird Chests Locked Behind Wind or Electric Barriers, Investigate Chests, Bloaty Floaty Chests, Time Challenges, Quest Rewards, and a few other obscurely hidden chests from exploration. Phew! There you go. Those are all the ways you can obtain wishes in Genshin Impact, and that marks the end of my video. A huge thanks to Tuna for sharing his tips, a huge thanks to you for making it to the end of the video, and of course, a huge wish of good luck to you as well for whoever you're pulling for. To all cock and ball wanters, May the Mehoyo Corporate Masterminds bring peace to your roles.
But yeah, I really hope this video helps, and cheers! I'll see you around.